All right. Happy 2023, bro. Yeah, man. It's a good it's a good year to be alive, <laughs> and you know, it's it's a great day to be on the culture couch for another installment. Sorry we missed you guys last week. I know that you were patiently waiting for the next drop. I know I was. <laughs> wait no wait no longer. Um, Got hit and refresh on my YouTube. <laughs> for the gut. <laughs> well, we're here. It's a it's a Tuesday. A balmy. A balmy Tuesday, Tuesday, and we're here to talk about the T. Like, you guys know this term, the T? It's like, you know, conflict, people talking about each other, uh, you know, people having problems with each other at work. Conflict. There's a difference between conflict and tension, and maybe we'll get into that a little bit later. If you play nice. <laughs> if you're a good viewer, we'll talk about Tension later, but uh, at any rate, there's, and I think m- maybe more specifically, peer-to-peer conflict. And when we say that, we're talking about, you know, it, we wouldn't be talking about like somebody has a problem with their boss or whatever. You're having a conflict with somebody that's on the same level in the company, same role, same kind of thing as you. Um, Would you say that's the most common type of conflict in a work environment that you notice? I would say I would say so. But, I mean, if you ask people why they hate or love their jobs, they love their jobs because they love their peer coworkers, but then they hate their jobs because they hate their bosses. Hmm. So I think it'd go either way. But I, um, I think just... For the purpose of today, peer to peer, that you can kind of look at it from two two different angles. I think we'll talk about like maybe some some different situations that can arise between peers, uh, common issues that you might have. We'll talk about it from our coffee shop perspective because that's just all we know. Hey, I could bring up some stories from the old smoothie shop. You could, but I won't. You could. You I'm could. not going to. And I think maybe one of the most common sort of problems at work between peers ultimately is the leader's fault in some sense. Uh, And it's this whole like, hey, I thought we were supposed to do this thing this way, but you're doing it that way. And then that other person is like, well, I heard that we were supposed to do it this way. And And that is in some sense on the leader because they didn't communicate it clearly enough to those two people. But it's almost as if that situation is inevitable, right? True. Yeah, there's uh, there's definitely a lot of legwork a leader or an owner or manager can step into by creating a systemized, sustainable, and sweet work environment. How do you use the third S? The triple S. Yeah, the triple S. Um, swaggy environment. That'd be the fourth um, optional fourth. Yeah, because what you're hinting at is, so we'll try to get to the root of what is continuing to cause peer-to-peer tension or conflict at work, and a lot of the times it is um, issues with the environment and the systems. So, as a leader, if you're thinking through um, what kind of system you're plugging your team into. Um, it could be harmful for them to operate in that because there's so many unanswered questions, so much ambiguity that they're kind of left to their own devices. And a lot of times that creates friction because honestly, people just have a lot of beautiful but different ways about solving problems and coming to different solutions. And so when you're having to do that in a pretty high volume or high stress work environment, um, you're just kind of doing doing your team a, a no-no. Yeah. So, you know, that aside, though, you know, assuming that it's all it's going to be inevitable that there will be discrepancies between the way people do things at work. Totally. The question then becomes, if that's just inevitable in some to some degree, then how do you navigate that in a harmonious and helpful way? And holistic and uh horchata <laughs> in a in a in a helpful way. 
Sure. Um, because, I, I mean, there's been times like with you and I where we're, we're doing something different. And I notice it. And I know that we both care greatly about a good outcome mm-hmm. for the business. And, and I also know that we're both trying as hard as we can. That's another good assumption. We're tryhards. Um, because I know your character and we have history together and I trust you. And so then I need to ask myself, okay, is what he is doing so bad that I need to bring it up? Mm-hmm. Or can I just be like, okay, well, he's doing it differently than I would or I thought we should do it, but it'll still reach more or less the same outcome. Mm. I think that's the first step that not, not many people consider mm-hmm. because they just jump straight to like, oh, I thought we were supposed to do it this way. Um, you Almost know. dying to the system. Right. Without thinking about the chain Outcome. reaction. Right. And so, I mean, how how would you envision a, a good, healthy way to... Let, let's say somebody is doing something at work, and it's definitely not how you should do it. And if they continue doing it that way, it's going to be bad for everybody. How... If you, were, if you and I were peers, which we are, um, what... How would you confront me about that? This... You can kind of jump to other conversations that we've had ad nauseum around feedback and talking to the team. But in this specific scenario, I think it's really important to gauge your level of history and trust with the person you've been working with. And basically, I would just soften the blow the less or the more I... The the less you know them, the softer the blow. Yes. So for us, I'd be like, what are you doing? Like what? Hey, we're doing it. This way, we're we're dosing out to 18 grams. I've seen you just dose out for 16 grams. What's going on? Mm-hmm. I'd still want to know because I trust him and I know that he's smart. I'd be like, what's your thought process? And then he says, oh, well, grinder's acting weird. I'm just trying to, like, create a new recipe on the fly real quick. I'm like, oh, okay, instead of instantly condemning the action. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would still seek first to understand, still assume the best. It's all the same stuff that we talk about. Um, communicate objectively what's going on, but you can kind of do it in a pretty quick way instead of like a, hey, can we talk about how awesome you are and how much I love working with you? Uh, I just noticed that you're doing this a little different, and I just wanted to give you space to talk about why you did it differently. Yeah. But honestly, from a peer-to-peer standpoint, you just don't want to have those types of conversations. If someone talks to me that way, I would be so annoyed. (laughs) I'd be like, just what are you saying? Right. Well, I'm saying in general, if you're working in an establishment, you prefer that everybody just do everything and you never have to talk about this. Mm-hmm. So anytime there are these like, there's this dissonance or this gap of understanding, you're like, there's this fear that can mount or stress or tension that you have to hurdle, right? So there's just already a little bit of weight to those situations. But I think the more that you are comfortable hurdling that, the easier it becomes just to say, hey, what's up? What are you doing? Yeah. So let's say, so that was a really simple example of just two people are doing something different at work and they both want to do a great job, but you have to reconcile that. Let's move on to something a little bit more juicy, like maybe somebody is, the, the way that they're communicating is offending or hurting another team member that's their peer you know like i've always i've always thought about this like before we before we had employees i was always curious on how that would shake out Mm -hmm. like should we just tell the peers to just duke it out with each other and reconcile talk about it is that on them or should the person that's hurt talk to the boss and then the boss talks to the the uh the person who was, you know, in the wrong or the, the uh, what's the word? I don't even know. But the person who who said the thing. Yeah. Um, the perpetrator. The perpetrator. Yeah, that's the word. How does all that work? You know, if that happens, should the boss be like, hey, you're hurting. This person told me you're hurting them. Should you be that straightforward? Or should you just say, uh, you know, hey, I want to talk to you about an area of growth in a general sense. And if that person and the person you're talking to is like, oh, did somebody say something? Then you're like, no, nobody said something. You know, I just, I just want 
It's like I'm telling everybody this. Yeah, it's, that's kind of hard to navigate. How have we done it? Well, it comes in all shapes and sizes. Um, it's I get it, and I we do this too, where it's just easier to process what's going on with another coworker with someone else. And if you have a leader, and if you make like communicate communicative spaces like we do with health checks that kind of stuff is just going to come up and then when that stuff comes up i me or whoever is doing the health check usually just tries to unpack it try to provide some context for the situation well it's just i'll let you get back to that but it's good it's helpful for the person who is hurt or offended to process that with the leader if they trust them yeah because that person has a has a different broader perspective of the situation yeah as and opposed to like another one of their peers which can kind of get gossipy and weird i would say yeah you can get gossipy get kind of choppy and then then you can kind of have a distorted view of this individual pretty easily yeah i'm saying it happens every time but it's easy so yeah if you Naturally, you usually come up with a leader first in one of our conversations, unpack it, try to process it, try to separate subjective and objective, you know, um, and give space for that. And then sometimes I'd say it's like 50-50 of like, or maybe even greater, like, hey, you know what? Yeah, that, they were probably just having an off day. Whatever. I'm just, I'm glad I talked about it. I feel better. I'm just going to drop it. Like, no biggie. But for the stuff that's maybe a little bit more systemic behavior or repeated or systemic, <laughs> um, I think that's usually where it's like it's brought up, it's processed, and it's like, okay, there's got to be a next step. Or so, if or if you're hearing multiple people talk about this person and the same behavior, yeah. then you know you've got something you need to address. Yeah, so typically the way we roll is we really try to empower the individual who um, had the hands-on experience to talk to the perp, the perpetrator. The perp. <laughs> We're really villainizing this person, but this <laughs> victim is victim and perpetrator. That's this, how valor works. Yeah. We're all we're all guilty of all this. You know, oh, it's yeah. like it's a very human space, and we we give a lot of um, ownership to people, and so this stuff just happens, and it's honestly always worth fighting for. Um, side note, but yeah, try to empower that person to have a conversation on their own time. Well, one discrepancy is like what we first were talking about with maybe like a systems thing or a just on the floor moment is that it's typically something really quick that you can just have a conversation in that moment Yeah. versus maybe something that has to do with performance or um, affecting other team members or guests where maybe you have to interfere in the moment just to make it a safe environment and then you have to kind of do some uh, cleanup work after the matter. Yeah. Um, on the on the performance note, one just really cut and dry, easy example is, let's say you have somebody that's supposed to be pulling shots and then somebody that's supposed to be taking those shots and building drinks with them. And the person who's building the drinks really needs that shot puller to go faster. Mm -hmm. And then that person who's making drinks starts to get annoyed at that person because they're a slow poke. Like, it that person that is making the drinks is in a little bit of a tough situation there. Right. Because it's kind of jerk move to be like, go faster. Like, especially if that they're a new person. Mm -hmm. And so I could see that, that uh, we call them expo, the people that are building the drinks, kind of bringing that up to the leader and saying, not saying like this person's slow, they need to be fired, but like, hey, I could maybe see that that could be an area for growth for them. Yeah. And then you would take that information and maybe not even, like, confront them with it, but you could just, like, spend some time training them on speed. Yeah. Um, as opposed to, like, there's this animosity between two people and it's personal, you know, just trying to make it where everybody wins and everybody's growing. And that example you gave is a really common occurrence because we're bringing on people constantly. Like every day. Um, <laughs> so when you start to see something like this, I think it's always powerful to be able to figure out a system to address it as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. So in this situation, we have like a shift lead, like a point 
who people can go to on the floor and communicate what's going on. Yeah. So it should be pretty obvious if that person is going very slow, then maybe expo, if they're point or if they're not point, talk to point be like, hey, we're really busy. This brewer, they're doing great. There's new. I really think we need to sub sub out for this little moment to, so we can get caught up. Yeah. And that's the thing where, and I've done it tons of times where I say, hey, you're doing awesome. We're just super busy, so I'm going to send you to this position instead so that we can get caught up, but we'll just keep working on this. And it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. NB Diesel. Yeah. Certainly a lot to unpack in all this. Maybe Next Culture Couch will will continue down this path, but um, I think the main things to, to take away here are just having an environment, doing everything you can to create an environment where – People know what they're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. Really what we're talking about is proactively eliminating as many conflicts as you can. For sure. Which is pretty like a night, like a duh. Like, of course, you'd want to do that. Have an intentional business. Yeah. I mean, communicating systems, but inevitably those people will not be on the same page about something or somebody will be going too slow or whatever. Having an environment where ideally those two people are equipped and comfortable enough to just chat about that real quick in a non-emotional, non-personal way, which is easier said than done. Um, and if that doesn't work, then processing it with a leader, uh, if the leader see, sees fit, you know, addressing that with the person, um, maybe even including both of them in on it, just to talk about the best path forward. But um, it's a, every situation is a little different but it's all like the same principles that we always come back to. Yeah, and I feel like we talk around this a good bit with feedback, conflict, accountability, vulnerability, and it's so important because it really is just like the glue of the company, right? Like the way that a team bonds and works together kind of sets the whole stage for guest experience, service experience, product experience. No doubt. Just the overall culture of the cafe. And so it may seem a little uh, redundant, but it's something that we spend so much time working on and thinking about. And um, we think if you guys, whether you're working at a business or owning your own or wanting to start your own one day, um, no matter what industry you're in, if you have people figuring out how to... Um, manage and like lead and empower these dynamic conversations is really going to take you places, which is just sweet. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, thanks for joining us on another week of culture couch. Love you.